Could something as simple as a mindset determine whether you, your idea, your invention, with a Sony Betamax and the portable, your company, everybody needs a Yugo sometime, succeeds or fails? Without an entrepreneurial mindset, your engineering solution, revolutionary idea, or amazing innovation, it instantly covers your bald spot, might just fizzle in the marketplace. Consider an example. A Chicago company called RF Ideas developed what seemed like a terrific engineering innovation, a badge that would automatically boot up or shut down a computer when a physician entered or left his or her office. So our vision for RF Ideas was to develop a much better solution for identifying and authenticating people throughout the workday. We knew we could develop a product that could do a much better job, not only authenticating the users, but also detecting when they stepped away from the computer and make sure it was resecured. It was estimated that the technology would save physicians up to 15 minutes every day. The idea was met with enthusiasm by the medical community, investors, and the media. The stars seemed to align for RF ideas until the badges went on the market. To their surprise, no one was buying. We knew we had a problem, you know, when there weren't orders because everything else was telling us we were in good shape. The press, the interviews, I mean, there was CNBC, we were in the Wall Street Journal, we were in a lot of places that would have confirmed to anyone that you're on the right path. But the orders at the end of the day, you know, that counts for something. <laughs> Counts for paying bills. And we thought we could develop this product and get it to market very quickly and you know start generating revenue. To, the difficulty was getting that into the next level of sale and uh, that did uh, you know drive us close to the abyss. We just could not get enough revenue generated to really go to the next step. It created a situation for Rick and I where we had to decide what to do. It was a very difficult time. We had staff that we had to, to reduce. It turned out that engineering a great new gadget was not enough. The potential customers, physicians, liked the concept, but not the execution. They felt they already had too many badges. The device could not distinguish between two physicians walking into the office at the same time. Computers would turn on when doctors were simply passing by. The RF Ideas team needed a better understanding of their customers' needs and the overall marketplace. The experience of RF ideas is not unique. Engineers cross into the entrepreneurial realm routinely, often with disappointing results. One reason is that while college engineering programs teach fundamentals and encourage innovation, they fail to teach students how to create value. An engineering education must equip engineers with an entrepreneurial mindset. But engineering programs haven't changed much over the decades. They emphasize problem solving, technical knowledge, and innovation, but neglect critical concepts like how to recognize business opportunities and the economic and societal impact of engineers' work. Universities often fail to teach aspiring engineers how to transfer technical ideas from one setting to another or how to identify and solve problems that meet customers' needs. Fortunately for RF ideas, they learn these lessons in time. They modified the product based on feedback from their customers, increasing its practicality and value. Customer engagement is now a core part of their culture. Customer feedback is key, and I'd say one of RF Ideas claims to fame is they're, they're attentive to the customer. Recognize that without the customer, they're nothing. We've learned to listen intently to the customer. So when we're thinking about how he's gonna be successful, we got to make sure that the product we're going to eventually provide him gets him to where he's trying to get to. They also abandoned the idea of creating a whole new badge. Instead, they convinced an established badge manufacturer to adopt the RF Ideas technology. If we could develop what we're kind of doing right now using those badges, we could leverage the investment the customers already made, have an installed base to go after, and it made it a much easier type of approach to the customer than trying to force our own solutions onto them. Developing the entrepreneurial mindset is important, not just for individual engineers or businesses, but in order to grow GDP, create jobs, and maintain American standard of living. In his book, The Coming Jobs War, Gallup CEO Jim Clifton writes that three billion people worldwide are competing for 1.2 billion full-time jobs. If the United States is not producing entrepreneurially minded workers, particularly engineers, our ability to compete globally will continue to decline.
Clifton predicts that if economic trends remain as they are, China will consume a 35% market share of the world's economy by the year 2040. The United States, on the other hand, will drop to a 15% global market share. The result, according to Clifton, will be a jobs Armageddon in America, with unemployment and underemployment rising to more than 40%. One way to avoid this grim scenario, according to Clifton, is for the United States to encourage entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is more important than innovation, Clifton writes. Innovation is critical, but it plays a supporting role to almighty entrepreneurship. It's far better to invest in entrepreneurial people than in great ideas. A growing number of universities, businesses, and authors are recognizing the need for the United States to produce engineers with an entrepreneurial mindset. With the help of Daniel and Alicia, two students who just graduated with engineering degrees, we'll look at what this mindset is and what it isn't. Daniel and Alicia received their degrees from a university that teaches traditional engineering with an emphasis on problem solving and technical acumen. When they arrive at their new jobs, they receive the specifications and get straight to work. They apply the technical skills they acquired in college and even demonstrate some innovation, but that's where their engagement ends. Daniel and Alicia focused on the problem at hand and executed the task they were given but they did not engage the company's customers or anticipate new market opportunities. Eventually, global competition eroded the company's market share until it was no longer profitable. Could an entrepreneurial mindset have led to a more positive outcome? This time, Daniel and Alicia began by asking questions. Recognizing the problem as an opportunity, they talk with customers about their needs. The answers make them reconsider the purpose of the new specifications. The feedback leads them to the realization that there are different markets. When they analyze societal and economic trends, it becomes clear that one market segment will grow. The specification handed to them is not the answer. Instead, they propose an alternate technology that better serves the growing market. In this process, Daniel and Alicia simultaneously evaluated the need, the market, societal trends, and technical feasibility. Now that they understand the full range of opportunities, Daniel and Alicia collaborate with each other and with colleagues to design a product that exceeds the specifications, achieves cost savings, and expands into new business opportunities. They exhibited the attributes of entrepreneurially minded engineers, helping their employer meet with commercial success. By embracing this entrepreneurial mindset, RF Ideas salvaged their business and went on to enjoy dramatic success. In 2012, Inc. Magazine included RF Ideas on its annual list of America's fastest growing private companies, ranking it number 13 in the computer hardware industry. The company had three-year sales growth of 133%. In 2013, RF Ideas was back on track to do 38 million worth of business. But it was a close call, and the engineers at RF Ideas wish they had been exposed to the elements of the entrepreneurial mindset in their university engineering programs. It's the key element they now look for when hiring engineers. In the first company that we were part of, it was try to get the cheapest person you could and we'll train them. Now what we're doing is we're trying to get the, the best fit that brings the missing piece for us to the company and train us. Obviously, in a company like ours, the most entrepreneurial-minded people that come do the best. A lot of engineers focus on the technical tasks. They don't want to look at the broader scope of maybe the customer impact, maybe the impact to marketing, maybe the impact to tech support. You know, they're so focused on this thing I'm trying to create or invent that they really don't get the whole picture of what the influence of that product they're working on may have. Everyone in here has to have an entrepreneurial mindset of, to do the best.